G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here, and today we're looking at how you can live stream recorded content. Now, there's really not that much to it, but we've had quite a few emails with people asking, how do? So we thought we would make a quick video. Basically, if you wanna live stream recorded content like a video file, you just need to do four things in vMix. First, you just need to add the video file to your production, set up your stream, start the stream, and then start the video. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting Oh, looks like you're still here, so we may as well go over how to do it. I mean, I've got nowhere else to be. I don't know about you. So anyway, let me just jump over to my laptop. As you can see here, I've got a Dell Alienware, so one of the Sapphire reference systems on our website. So I'm just gonna start with a blank vMix production and show you how to set it all up. So first of all, what I wanna do is go down to the add input menu down the bottom, click on it, then go to the video section, which is at the top here, and then click browse. So I can browse to wherever I have my video file, click it, click open, and then down the bottom here, I just need to click Okay, now vMix supports a lot of different video type files that you can use in your production if you want to play them out in vMix in a production or if you just want to live stream some recorded video that you already had. Now, it's important to remember to use uh, files that are on a local drive and don't use network stores for any sort of assets with vMix. Now, you can also drag and drop video files and a lot of different other files into vMix just from the folder if you wanted to. You don't have to go through the add input menu. All right, so now we have our video file in the production. As you can see, because it's the only file that we have in here, it's going to be in the preview and in the program output here. All right, so I'm just going to go into the settings of the input by clicking the little gear icon, and we'll go through a couple of the settings for the video file. Now at the top, you can change the name of it, so I could remove this if I wanted to. So now it's just called just a video. Now the important settings are down below here. So up the top here, you'll see a setting called automatically mix audio. Now, this is important because it's going to automatically turn on our audio when we move it from the preview to the program output. So that's what we want to do. Then underneath that, we want it to automatically play with the transition, which will come in handy a little bit later on when I show you. Uh, automatically restart with transition. We can tick that if we want. Um, that'll allow us to demonstrate what it looks like when we transition a video. It's going to automatically start from the beginning and automatically pause after transition. So that's important if you are kind of talking about a video, moving back to live and then moving back to a video and you want it to start in the same spot as well. But you don't have to tick that. Play around with these settings and see what works best for you. Now, once you've completed that, just click the X up the top and it will save those. So now that we have our video file in our production, we just need to go through and set up the streaming. So down the bottom of vMix, we have a streaming section. Just click on the little gear icon next to it that allows us to configure our streaming settings. Now I've already gone into my Facebook account. I've logged into it, I've authorized it. And so I'm good to go with Facebook. Again, you can choose another different CDN from this drop-down menu here and set it all up uh, and get ready to go. Uh, and then underneath that, I can set up the quality settings from the drop-down menu, or I can go into it with this cog icon here on the side here and change the quality settings for the stream. Underneath that, I've ticked use hardware encoder, which means it's going to be using my GPU to encode this live stream, which is what you wanna do if you've got a new NVIDIA graphics card. Now, underneath that, there's a save and close. I just point out that we've only got one stream today, so I'm just streaming from the first stream, and then I'm going to click save and close down the bottom. So that now I've got my stream ready to go. All right, so now we have our video file in our production. We've set up our stream. Now we need to talk about starting the stream. Now, in order to start this stream, we can just click the big stream button down the bottom here. We've only got one stream, so we can set that up by clicking the stream button here. One thing to keep in mind is that when you hit the stream button, it's gonna go orange for a few seconds as vMix connects to your streaming provider. And when it's streaming, it's going to go red. So there's usually a few seconds for that sort of handshake to take place, which means that if you play your video and then play your stream, it means that a few seconds at the start of your video won't be seen. So don't put any like secrets to your success in the first three seconds of your video. It's an idea to have a little bit of an intro if you want to do it that way. Alternatively, you could start the stream, wait for it to go red, and then hit play on the video. So there will be a few seconds of blank video right at the start of the stream, but people won't notice that and they don't really care. So it's up to you how you would want to stream so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit the stream button and it's gonna go orange. And then when it's connected, it's gonna go red and then I'm going to hit play. So now I have this video file playing. You can probably hear that, I should turn that sound off. There we go. And so now we have that video file that's being streamed out to our Facebook page. 
Now, alternatively, what a lot of people do is they like to set up a countdown image or just an image to say that the streaming is going to be starting soon. So what I'm going to do is just going to grab this image that I've created here and just drag this into vMix. As you can see here, I've got a little sign that says the show will start soon. So if I bring this across into the program output, that's what people would see on the stream when I started it. Now, again, you could go into the title section of vMix and add a countdown timer and then just add that to the bottom. And then once that hits the end of the countdown timer, you could set a trigger for it to switch to the video or you could just do it manually. So for example, if I wanted, if I click start stream now, people will see this screen and then all I need to do is transition to my video file like so. Now, as we set it up before to automatically restart when we transitioned, it started from the beginning again. Okay, so maybe you don't wanna to have to sit at your computer for the entire time while your video plays. You wanna be able to go up, maybe get a drink and grab yourself a lamington or something like that. Um, so you wanna be able to automate when the stream turns off. So what we can do is we can use vMix triggers. So all I need to do is go into the video file settings, go to triggers here, and then set up a trigger. So basically a trigger in vMix allows you to perform different functions on the input. So basically when the video starts, when it finishes, when it transitions, that kind of thing, uh, we can set up triggers to happen. So what we're gonna do now is on the completion of this video file, we're going to stop streaming. So I'm gonna go to the all section up here and find the stop streaming section here, like so. So now on the completion of the video, it's going to stop streaming. Now, we don't have multiple streams set up here. So we're just going to leave this blank. If you had, if you wanted to stop it on stream two or stream three, you could set that up here and follow the instructions in our um, knowledge base if you need more information about that. Okay, so I'm gonna click add. And so now we've got on completion, stop streaming. Just close this out now. So I'm just going to move to the end of this video so that we can set that up, stop streaming. So like no hands, five, four, three, two, one, it'll stop streaming automatically. So as you can see, it reached the end of the video and then my streaming stop. So that's really handy if you wanna be able to walk away, set up a video, let it stream and just let it go and stop whenever the video finishes. Now you can also set up triggers at the start of that as well. So you could maybe have on transition in of the video, then start the stream. So you kind of start and stop the stream that way. Now we don't have a lot of automation in vMix for setting up 24 seven scheduling. vMix is not television station software. It's not designed to create time-based scheduling and that sort of thing. So if you're looking to run a TV station, there's plenty of other software and hardware out there that will help you do that. vMix isn't for that kind of thing. Now, if you're looking to stream multiple video files, what you can do is use the video list feature that's available in vMix, HD, 4K and Pro. So you just go to add input, and then go to list and then go to add. So basically you can create a list of videos that will play directly off the hard drive that you've got. It's not going to bring them into vMix as inputs. It's just going to play those videos through a list. So that's a really easy way to be able to stream multiple video files in a row if you wanted to do that. Now you could also use the playlist feature in vMix. So that playlist feature will go through different inputs that you have in vMix. So if you had multiple video files that you wanted to cycle through, you could do that here in vMix. And you could also break that up with images or live cameras and that sort of thing as well. So if you wanna check out those features, check out the playlist and the video list features on our um, YouTube page. Okay, so that's a really quick look at how you can stream recorded content. Maybe you've got a video file of a concert that you wanna to stream to people or an old live stream that you want to kind of restream again after the fact in case people missed it and they want to kind of watch it live as it happened and that sort of thing. So there's plenty of different reasons why people would do that. So if you do have any questions about vMix, feel free to drop us an email via the support page on vmix.com. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. I'm actually going to go this time, even though I still don't have anywhere else to go. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix video or head to vmix.com for a free 60-day trial. See you later.